Google's Pixel 2 XL currently holds the top spot for phone camera supremacy, but our final battle this year is a huge one. Apple's back again, this time with the iPhone X, Huawei has the Mate 10 Pro, and Sony is throwing the Xperia XE1 into the mix. It's a four-way competition, with the winner taking our top spot to finish out 2017. This photo shootout series determines the best phone camera in a King of the Hill style battle, with the winner moving on to face the next major smartphone. This episode marks the first time we are presenting the results in 4K, so enjoy that extra resolution while looking over the test examples. Like always, our results will be broken into four categories. Color, clarity, exposure, and user experience. All of the phones are tested using the stock camera app in full auto mode, the way a majority of the people use their phones. I focus on real-world results and use a critical eye to determine a winner. Now let's meet the phones. Our current top spot is held by the Google Pixel 2 XL. It uses impressive machine learning algorithms to stitch together multiple exposures, resulting in an amazing final photo, all while using fairly standard parts. In our last shootout, Apple's iPhone 8 Plus was supplanted by the Pixel 2, but now Apple gets another shot at the top spot with the iPhone 10. The hardware is very similar to what's in the 8 Plus, but maybe these small tweaks will help put Apple in the top spot once again. Huawei's Mate 10 Pro boasts AI-powered intelligent photography and a partnership with boutique camera maker Leica. But Huawei hasn't had a notable track record in the past, so we'll see if the Mate 10 Pro can join the big leagues. And finally, after months of waiting, I have my hands on a Sony phone the Xperia XZ1. Sony smartphones have long been a top request from you, the audience, despite Sony's small market share in the US. So I'm hoping to see some impressive photos. Now that we've met the phones, let's go over the results. First up is color, and here we're covering color reproduction and white balance. This first example tells a basic story in regards to white balance. The Pixel leans cooler, and the iPhone leans warmer, where the Mate 10 falls into a snug spot in between. The Sony XZ1 actually adds a bit of green tint, and notice how different the wood floor appears because of it. It's way off. Here in the stairwell, the Mate 10 is the coolest, followed by the Pixel 2. The iPhone once again skews warmer, and the XZ1 goes even further, pushing too far into a horrible yellow. Now, white balance can be a tricky thing. The software has to decide whether it wants the scene to portray the yellow tones of the fluorescent light, or compensate for it in order to achieve a true white, but some of it just comes down to personal taste. This next shot of a meal from Smashburger helps illustrate how white balance can affect the perception of a scene. Specifically, check out the fries. The Pixel's fries are cooler, so they come across as a bit dull, even though they're the most accurate. The iPhone's fries and bun look a bit too radioactive for my taste, and Sony's fries and ketchup are cartoonishly red but I find the Mate 10's fries, bun, and lettuce to be a pumped up version of accurate, though in a good way. This last scene of flowers at Home Depot shows the color reproduction capabilities of each camera. I'll even throw in histograms to bring it home. Each phone except for the Mate 10 has spikes of color, limiting the total color variation. The reds on the Mate 10 don't blend together the way the other photos do. The iPhone does better in the greens, but overall I was surprised by how accurate the Mate 10 is. Once again, color can be a matter of personal taste, but the Huawei Mate 10 Pro takes this category for me. Next up is clarity. We'll be going over the sharpness of the cameras and how well each phone stays sharp in dark environments. Now let's start off with an Atom favorite, the brick wall. Brick walls have a lot of detail and texture, which shows immediate differences between photos. Zooming in, we see that the Pixel 2 retains great texture on the bricks. The iPhone 10, not so much. It looks low res in comparison. The Mate 10 holds up better, but like LG, Huawei adds sharpening in post in order to get there. And I would have thought that the XC1, with its higher resolution sensor, would have done a lot better than this. Now let's move on to this macro shot of this succulent. Zooming in and focusing on the tiny hairs along the edges, we see that the Pixel 2 is amazingly detailed. The iPhone and XC1 feel blurry in comparison, which is once again sad for the Sony phone. The Mate 10 really does keep up with the Pixel 2, but loses some of the texture on the leaves. This next photo in a garage reveals how noise reduction can strip away detail. The Mate 10 once again reminds me of what we used to see on LG phones, with aggressive noise reduction resulting in blocky shapes in the window. The XE1 does even worse, losing detail in the bricks as well. The iPhone 10 does pretty well in this situation, but I still prefer the Pixel 2's grain patterns and clarity. 
The same garage at night tells a bit of a different story. Here the Pixel 2 did capture a clean image, whereas the Mate 10 and the iPhone 10 are perfectly usable. The XE1's results still boggle my mind. The detail should be there on such a high megapixel count sensor, but it just isn't. And despite having the lowest ISO of all the phones, the iPhone has the most pronounced grain, though it doesn't bother me. This super dark photo in the corner has the Pixel 2 faring a bit better. The word orbit is more clear than what's on the iPhone, but it's still not really shining. The Mate 10 does really well, but its noise reduction is still pretty aggressive. Out in the rain, let's observe the texture of the water on the car. Right off the bat, I'm going to call out the horrible results of the XC1 and praise the Mate 10's ability to maintain some detail. The iPhone does a bit better than the Pixel 2, which really struggled in low light this time. So while the Pixel 2 is the clear favorite in bright light, Huawei's Mate 10 Pro does great in almost every situation here, taking the clarity category. The third test is exposure. Here we're covering how each phone decided to expose for a scene and how much dynamic range each one was able to retain. I'll provide histograms so you can see the results for yourself. Now let's start this category off with a tough scene. This environment really tests the capabilities of each camera and the histogram results show most of them holding up very well. As in past tests, the Pixel skews darker and the iPhone skews lighter. Huawei has a great showing here, retaining plenty of information in the highlights and the lowlights. But man, the photo from the Sony phone is a hot mess. The photo is wildly underexposed and there is barely any information left in the dark areas. This next scene is also fairly complicated and the results are similar. The Pixel has the most dynamic looking photo, but the Mate 10 is way more natural and retains plenty of valuable exposure information. This basic scene produces very similar results on the Pixel 2 and the Mate 10. The XE1 is darker, again, but the iPhone 10 blows out the white strip. I'm not quite sure what happened here. It's a simple scene, but the iPhone makes a bad choice. It holds the shutter open far longer than the rest, and the HDR just doesn't kick in to protect those highlights. Moving into the stairwell, let's focus on the lighting fixture. It's blown out to various degrees in each image, but some obviously more than others. The iPhone and the XE1 lose any hint of the cage around the bulb, but it's present on the Pixel 2 and Mate 10. Looking at the picture overall, the Pixel keeps the most consistent exposure, if a bit processed. This next example is very interesting. Other than the obvious HDR results, there is a specific quirk to look at. The Pixel's shutter speed interfered with the refresh rate of the lights, resulting in the lines here. When I shot this photo, every light had these moving lines on the screen, and it was super distracting. Speaking of quirks, here's another one, this time on the iPhone X. Shooting directly into the sun like this can be helpful when trying to test lens flares and other anomalies. Each phone has its own drawbacks, but none of them are as extreme as the iPhone. The flare is so pronounced that it washes out detail and dynamic range on top of being visually distracting. I'm going to have to give this category to Google's Pixel 2 XL. The fourth and final test looks at user experience. Here I take into account everything that revolves around actually using the cameras day to day. Let's start with the Pixel 2. There's plenty to love about using Google's stock camera app. It opens lightning fast, it's dead simple, and it's powered by Google's amazing computational algorithms. But it falls short in terms of manual options and only has basic features like panorama and portrait mode, which we'll get to in a minute. Using the iPhone X felt just like using the Apple 8 Plus a couple of months ago. The only real difference is the taller aspect ratio of the screen, but it didn't have too much of an impact in day-to-day -day shooting. Generally, Apple's stock camera app is simple to use and reliable, but lacks professional features like a manual mode or access to deeper settings from within the app. But if you want quirkiness, then you will find it in Huawei's camera. It's not the most intuitive experience, but it has a nice blend of features including a full manual mode, a light painting mode, and an auto watermark? It's worth noting that the Mate 10's second camera is a 20 megapixel monochrome sensor, so its black and white photos are stunning. Sony's stock camera app on the XE1 is surprisingly different than what's on most phones. The layout and features feel more like something out of their standalone cameras, and it's refreshing. But I gotta give Sony props for having a dedicated physical photo button with a half press to focus sensitivity. Very fun for photographers. Every phone other than the XE1 has a version of portrait mode, which introduces blur into the background of a scene and draws focus to the main subject. 
Each implementation has its issues and quirks, not to mention varying fields of view, but the tech is in its early days and can already produce amazing results. I preferred using the Mate 10's version the most because of its consistent results and variable aperture. The iPhone's results are held back by its telephoto camera's abilities, but felt the most natural for portraits. The Pixel 2 is able to process blur with only one camera, which is amazing, but you can't see the results in real time, and it struggles with some objects more than the other cameras. All in all, I'm giving the user experience category to Huawei's Mate 10 Pro. So now it's time to crown a winner. Despite its reputation, I was not impressed with Sony's XZ1, and it came in last. The minor improvements to the telephoto lens weren't enough for the iPhone X to take it, and it comes in third. Google's Pixel 2 XL is a beast of a camera and a strong second, but this time the top spot goes to the Huawei Mate 10 Pro. Having used last year's Mate 9, I was stunned by how far Huawei has come within a year's time. The Mate 10 Pro strikes a great balance between power and features, all while presenting pleasing colors and retaining plenty of dynamic range. Its results remind me of what I loved about the LG G6 earlier this year, and feels like what the V30 should have been. Man, the last three shootouts have had different winners, and the Mate 10 Pro will be our new pick for camera phone going into 2018. But what do you think of the results? Let us know in the comments, and subscribe for future head-to-head matchups.